Okay. Um, so would you like me to come to the podium or just from here? Uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Uh, maybe just for the microphone purposes. Maybe I'll get come up here. All right, so I wanted to provide a very briefly an overview of our research here at UTEP. A lot of this interdisciplinary collaboration was born out of a USDA funded grant. And uh, Luis and um, Natalia Villanueva have helped a lot on the <clears throat> computing side as well. But uh, Alex Mayer is our fearless leader and has over the last couple of years really done a lot of work to develop interdisciplinary collaborations the department now abbreviated as DEERS, the Department of Earth, Environment and Resource Systems or Services, I forget, is new geology. Uh, they have a couple of groups, both on the water resources side, who we'll get to hear from here uh, shortly. But think about a large scale and regional uh, basin scale water management. Um, and then also people who focus on water quality aspects. And then, of course, we've got folks in chemistry, several of uh, Dr. Jorge Ardea's team here in the audience with us. Uh, Dino and Vietnam, we work together on the NSF funded Nanotechnology Naval Water Treatment Center. And then in biology, we've got Liz, who also helps in the leadership of our Center for Environmental Resource Management with Alex, uh, thinking about wetlands and microinvertebrates and ecotoxicity. Um, I help lead our desalination center and focus on water treatment. Um, so just real quickly, really focus on pilot scale uh, technology development. So once we prove things in the laboratory, testing that in real waters in collaboration with El Paso Water and at the Brackish Groundwater National Desalination <laughs> Research Facility in Alamo Gordo, Mexico. Um, we've got several folks who walk, work on policy. Joe Hyman is particularly interested in affordability of water. And uh, Tom Fullerton in economics and finance has done some water rates analyses and water uh, consumption at the municipal scale. And then recently, I'm really excited about in our One Water Cluster, which I should have mentioned at the beginning, we we now have an active collaboration with um, folks in theater and dance, music, arts. And so I just want to make a quick plug for the demonstration at five o'clock this afternoon at the Rubin Center, um, an exhibit uh, focused on experiencing water, experiencing uh, how much water means to us here in this region. So um, hopefully, hopefully that was less than two minutes or close, but thanks for the opportunity to be here. Okay, next, uh, Hugo. Please. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so I'll, I'll very briefly talk about the, some of the, of the um, highlights of the research that we conduct at, at our the lab that I direct. Uh, I'm mostly interested in, in you know, how water interacts with our environment and um, how that modifies the water cycle and, um, and how the water cycle as, as it changes with time and especially now that uh, climate change is occurring, how it, that is also impacting our ecosystems. And by our ecosystems, I mean the natural ecosystems, but also um, like the human modified ecosystems, like agroecosystems, or we know in, in, in this area, there's a lot of agriculture going on, actually on both sides of the border. And that's, you know, one of the um, most important recurring issues in our, you know, in, in our binational relationships in terms of water usage. And so um, I'll very briefly tell you, um, we conduct experiments in, in, in my lab, uh, trying to understand how, the water that falls in in desert areas, arid areas, how that is being used by by, uh, by the ecosystems and mostly by plants, and uh, trying to see you know how much of the water that drains here is actually used by plants. And uh, I, I I show those those images where we uh, uh, make these experiments, deploy a lot of instruments, and then measure things. Uh, one of the things that we do is uh, uh, we sample plants. And, and uh, extract the water from them and then measure the isotopic composition, which gives us an idea of what kind of water that is, you know, how long has it been there? And uh, uh, we measure the same in the rainfall. And as you can see from, from that, that plot on the, on, the, uh, on the right hand side on the top, that shows a lot of dots. 
Those are, you know, that's water from rainfall and different vegetation types and soils. And you can see how, it, you know, it has different isotopic signatures. That means it's using different kinds of water. The other thing that I was showing you here is, uh, you know, an agricultural uh, plot where there's wheat. This is actually work done in Mexico, and it shows, you know, how much of the water that is used is being is being used by uh, by the plants and how much is being lost by evaporation. So that's a very important topic that we do uh, across the border, trying to understand how water uh, is used. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up, uh, Dr. Maria de Flores Bahias. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit of how we work at the chemistry department at the chemistry school at the um, Autonomous University of Chihuahua. So, our main interest, our main area of interest are bio, uh, biomass based materials for protoxidization. We began with the uh, biomass selection for cellulose and lignin generation. Uh, then um, we have evaluated uh, many green technologies based on ionic liquids, natural eutectic deep solvents, and other green solvents uh, for cellulose acetate generation. Our main interest in the top of is to generate uh, hybrid materials for membrane generation. And, um, and we have obtained a very interesting results uh, with nanocomposites made with lignin and iron doped activated carbon incorporated into the polymeric uh, matrix uh, as nanoparticles. We have very interesting results in biofoul interpolation when lignin is in incorporated into the matrix. And during acetylation. And also, we have found a um, positive correlation um, between ion rejection and leaving content in, this, in those compounds. Uh, by now, we have a um, Mexican National Council, as CONACYT, a project where we have extruded whole fibers from uh, agave bagas for membrane, for membrane technology. We have also uh, a deep interest in chemical sustainable filtration media, such as activated carbon, sealized clays, uh, cheetos and gels, and so on. We have made, uh, we have uh, uh, generate activated carbon and made, made tailor activated carbon, modify its chemical surface for an ion rejection and for an ion removal. Uh, by now we have a project also with a um, uh, with an organism, a water organism called GMAs, the Hamas, GMAs, uh, from Chihuahua, uh, where they are interested in developing filtration uh, media for, uh, to, to implement filtration units in the schools where there's a high ion uh, and contaminant concentration. We have also interest in water monitoring. Can you see the whole state over there? We have collaboration with the uh, North Carolina State University in an NIH project where we have monitored uh, 1119 sources, water sources, and correlate with fluoride and arsenic in urine. We have expertise in metal analysis, in organic analysis. And we have a concreted inventory of water in our state. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have uh, Dr. Beatriz Rocha Gutierrez. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about the research that I'm doing. Uh, I very focus in the mon in monitoring condolence in drinking water and also the reuse of water for different uses as agriculture. We have some studies about the, the effectiveness of the use of water for certain crops. And also we work with uh, emerging pollutants like the PAHs, how they can be removed from soils using microorganisms. 
Also, we are very focused in the in the uh, impact of uh, and ions like cations and anions and the the effectiveness to remove other pollutants from wastewater. And basically, what the research that I'm working right now is also with Conacyt, and we are working in the uh, circular economy and, and sustainable uh, processes to uh, for the reclaimed water. That water should be uh, incorporated in the industry because the you know the aquifers are very over uh, exploited, and we need to make we need to present more more strategies to leave the the drinking water only for certain purposes and in this project what we are um, working right now is also in evaluating the effectiveness of the wastewater treatment plants one in chihuahua other in sonora and other in durango and also we work with the local inventory in chihuahua for the government uh, analyzing fluoride in the drinking sources to see uh, how what was the exposition for 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 public and the impact in health. Thank you. Then uh, next we have uh, Dr. Judith Virginia Rio Salana. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. So, so uh, fast. So we started here uh, working on determining the metal concentration in the Rio Bravo. So there's very few studies about how is the condition of the Rio. And there may be a lot of data that from government agency, but there is few that is released to the public. So that's the first approach on water issues here. And also, we continue to looking at from the biological point of view about what kind of uh, Invertebrates are in they are located in some water water quality conditions because all water bodies are different conditions. So we have to characterize the water, what is in the water, so how, why organisms can live in that kind of water and why not in another kind of water or water body, either if it is a pond or if it is a river. So we continue working on that kind of research, characterizing this water bodies physically, biological, and chemical, chemical. and also um, in different places of the Chihuahuan Desert. And also we have done some research related to uh, metal absorption by biomasses, but the most important work that I'm interested in is in vertebrates, as I mentioned before, on characterization and doing inventories of these organisms because they are a race of animals in a water system. So the other life depends also in them, and the life in these water bodies will be depending on the water characteristics of each pond. Thank you. Thank you. Before I forget, um, I want to, I think it's just obvious there are several people online here. It looks like 33. And hopefully you've been able to hear us and uh, way to the microphone. So. Okay. That microphone is first. Okay. Okay. Um and then let's see. And then uh next we'll go with uh, Dr. Sergio Salsovis. Thank you. Hi, good uh, good uh, morning, afternoon. Um I represent a group of uh, researchers from the University of Juarez. Um, we are six uh, professors over there, uh, inter inter interdisciplinary fields, geochemistry, uh, pathor mediation, um, uh, bioremediation, environmental engineering. Uh, so our purpose is to Research purpose is to model transportation of contaminants in the several matrices, environmental matrices. So we cover many, many areas because uh, contaminants go to many matrices. So, uh, we are, our research group is consolidated. So we, 
and publish and um, and produce uh, um, in, in this field uh, areas uh, of research. We produce a lot of papers, and it's kind of different in two minutes. I can describe the whole uh, list of items that we we develop. But uh, our one of our last research was, uh, was funded by Conacit is uh, a, a special and temporal distribution of contaminants along the whole Rio Conchos, from the mountains all the way to Ojinaga. And that, that was our, our last uh, project uh, funded by Conacit. And then we make a radiography that's, uh, of the conditions of the uh, Rio Conchos. Uh, that, uh, as it, it needs to be updated. And we need funds for those to continue to that uh, project. Uh, so um, we work on uh, uh, the last project we worked with the uh, mayor, with Dr. Uh, mayor, was uh, uh, the quantification of, of water, of mass balance water in, in this region. And we that didn't cover pollutants. So that's, that's something that needs to be addressed in the next step of this collab future collaborations. Um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Then uh, Dr. David Chavez. Yeah, hey, I didn't bring any. No worries. No worries. You can describe <laughs> with your hands. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is David Chavez. I'm from Chihuahua University. And my research field is the organic chemistry. And I have a lot of experience working with. Um, uh, chromatogra chromatographic techniques. And in the last three years, I have been working with Dr. Baginas and Dr. Uh, Rocha, uh, trying to find uh, organic pollutants in uh, water, but not, not only water, in soils, in fruits. And basically what I'm doing on this uh, water research is uh, trying to find and, and quantify Organic, organic pollutants in, in, in this kind of samples. Okay, uh, my expertise is in the chromatographic areas and, and I think that's it. <laughs> uh, thank you everybody. I think you can see again what a stunning array of expertise we have here. And I think also it's exciting to note that we have a lot of um, complementary interests. And so I think we'll be seeing as we go on here that the uh, the sum of the collaboration between our three universities will be uh, uh, greater than, than the whole. So um, that's uh, again, what we're trying to do here is to figure out uh, what where we have ex expertise and interests that are in common and, and then also things that maybe we don't have at this, our university, but you guys are interested in this area and Somehow or another, I think we can put that together and offer a really exciting uh, research and educational program among the, the three universities. And I know that some of you have already been working across uh, our, our two or three universities here and, and have mentioned that. And that's a, a great place to start. Um, so thank you again for those, uh, those nice quick presentations. Um, and then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna have a panel discussion Around um, around starting and sustaining collaborations, and so I have a few questions that I'm going to ask. Uh, maybe not necessarily each of you to answer because we have a lot of panelists here, but I might move move uh, back and forth between the questions. Um, and so the the first question has actually been uh, addressed to some extent by some of you, and I'll I'll start with the. Uh, 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 Dr. Maria Dolores Bainas. Um, what are the, the focus areas of research in the water domain from your university? And again, maybe you've already said that in, in, in your comments here, so you can skip that. But then has there been collaboration at uh, in your university across across borders, US, Mexico, and then also between universities, let's say within Mexico or elsewhere? in the world, and then this is a long question. If so, what were the outcomes? Okay. So if you want to just take a few minutes uh, addressing that question in any way you'd like, then I'll, okay. I'll move on to the next okay. slide. 
or and I'm, I'm moving there or I think you I think with my voice as long as people can I think it's enough with my voice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yes, we have many schools at the uh, university that are working in water. We just uh, we just are from chemistry schools, but uh, there's the agroforest school, agrotechnology school, engineering school, and also the political science school. And in each school, there are many areas of interest. You say hydrology and hydraulics at the engineering school. Mm -hmm modeling, remote sensing, climate change, land use change impacts, also surface groundwater interactions, soil, water, aquifers, and groundwater flow, urban hydrology, also a gluten sewer systems and green infra infrastructure. Sorry, did I say infrastructure what? Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, and also a potable and non-potable water use and water purification, treatment, uh, treatment of domestic and industrial wastewater, uh, sanitation, public health, and risk assessment, epidemiology, and contaminant exposure. I say epidemiology, okay. Anthropogenic impacts on water, uh, focusing on surface and groundwaters, and point sources of pollution also. In water quality, which is chemistry, biology, uh, of water, nutrients, contaminants, chemical, microbial, anthropogenic, and also the hydrogeochemistry and contaminant hydrogeology. Um, also, uh, the water food drain fed and irrigated agriculture, uh, the water productivity, irrigation efficiency, hydroponics also, it's important in agricultural school, uh, system analysis, machine learning, water resources system, monitoring, remediation, and so, and about the political science school is the socioeconomic policy and regulation studies, the water governance, water law, property regimes, and, and so. And about the, the collaboration, there are many collaboration uh, one by one and uh, between two, two people, no? And there are a few projects with uh, financial aid. We have few uh, examples of the financial aid uh, between different partners, no, among different. Um, the collaboration established with the North Carolina State University was by an NIH project, the Water Health Group led by Dr. Carmen Gonzalez. They made an amazing uh, study. It was a translational project included a laboratory studies to identify mechanisms by which exposures to arsenic induced diabetes and cross-sectional population study in Chihuahua to characterize the association between chronic exposure uh, to arsenic in drinking water and risk of diabetes, and to define the role of nutrition and genetic polymorphism as a potential uh, modifiers of this risk. The outcomes were uh, outstanding, uh, around 20 per review articles, and also there's an evidence of the effects of arsenic in our population that are dramatic. Yes, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to yeah. come back to uh, the, the, the project you were mentioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, and then how about uh, uh, Dr. Rio Serrana, um, if you would have a few comments about the you, you talked about your own interests in, in, in water at, uh, at Guasejota. More broadly, and then uh, what sorts of binational uh, collaborations? Okay, yeah. I would like to make this into sites because I want also to Sergio to share another part. As a university, we have as a university we have different institutes, and our areas are kind of separated. So uh, I'm going to talk about what we do in biology. We have done collaboration here with UTEP a lot in terms of. Uh, vertifers and water uh, quality analysis at different levels, even in the Rio Grande or in Chihuahuan Desert. Um, there are other people that as a chemistry school there at the Institute, they do materials to test or remove dyes or even antibiotics from water. And there's also people that is interesting to know more about the organisms that live in this aquatic system, such as crustacea, or as um, 
frogs and other kind of aquatic animals that are important as an indicators for water quality and biodiversity in this system because there is also not a lot of information i apologize um, there is not also a lot of information about how our system as an ecosystems are what is the health of our ecosystem and that will be related to the biodiversity that we have in our places and community does not know a lot about that. And secondly, an important thing, and that is covered by the by the Social Science Institute in the university, there have been in some years ago, a study related to what people thought about drought. That's water too, but we do not include this part of the research or the the perception of people about what is going on with the water. And so there was a very interesting study on drought about perception of people uh, that they did in this institute too. Um, outcomes, yeah, they have been publications, participation, and in conferences, uh, we strength the collaboration. We, and that is part of another question that we have to answer, but there is a trust on what we do and we know how we work and, that helps a lot. And we have done some agreements too between other institutes uh, to continue working, respecting uh, the other people and the tools or knowledge that they have. And okay. I come from the civil engineering department. So our approach is more uh, in terms of engineering and we sustain our, our, uh, our faculty sustained the, the undergraduate degree of uh, environmental engineering and civil engineering and the master's program in environmental engineering. So our research is more focused on that part, those particular areas uh, related to the thesis of the students. Um, and we've been uh, working with uh, mostly with the private sector. They have needs in Juarez, uh, specific needs of, uh, of water quality characterizations and, and certain analysis that they require because we have a very big uh, uh, industry over there in Juarez. So we have a, um, an, a certified laboratory for analysis of, of water, uh, wastewater and with for metals, uh, physical chemical parameters and biological parameters. So that's one of the, our, our highlights. Uh, but uh, we, we face many, many challenges uh, in these last years because uh, we have uh, decreasing the funding for research. For, um, for example, there's this been less and less uh, uh, grants for, from CONACYT. They are, they are cleaning house in Mexico. There's some big problems over there in that, that, that uh, organization. So we don't have made much money for for funding. Uh, that, that 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 is one of our, our main challenges. So mostly is is the junta de aguas, and, and the, it will be the equivalent of what the water utilities. But in Juarez, they have uh, specific problems with certain wells that they 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 are starting a lot of uh, of manganese and iron, for example. So they they come to us and say, oh, why why you think uh, what is the approach uh, to solve this in this particular world? So we are more focused a little bit at this at this time in solving practical engineering problems that the community needs to address and, and water supply uh, networks. Uh, so we involve we are more involved in those kind of projects as they. Uh, are required by the the, the people, the, the the people in 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 these these organizations, and we adapt to what they need, and they and we ask them, uh, okay, so okay, we can do this uh, characterization of this water well, but uh, we're going to require this and this and this uh, 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 materials or chemical uh, materials. So I I think we, we are suffering a little bit in in our specific department because of the lack of funding and 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 i don't know in the watch but uh and and also we, we are starting to decline our faculty there is in declining in the terms of they are retiring and um so we, we haven't been able to replace them 
uh, so that made us the faculty overwork in terms of the of teaching, mm -hmm. uh, di uh, 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 directing thesis, make these kind of collaborations. Uh, so it's it's very it's been very hard for us. The the, the good help is is when we collaborate as as in UTEP that you guys have the funding from big big uh, organizations. And that 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 has been a lifesaver for us. It's what, a lifesaver for us because uh, of the and, so, and also yes. we, what we can we can give it to you guys is uh, in the last project we worked with you, uh, you didn't have the information from the Mexican side, uh, so we can provide you a yeah. researcher, developer, whatever. Just, um, and that was our, it, and that helped us a lot. The, the funding, the little funding that you gave us, the in terms of the global project, it was it's like a life server for us. And the contribution was yeah. that project. So far, far greater than the funds. So our research is being limited, but yes. the expertise is there, the equipment is there, um, the contacts are there, uh, and it's very interdisciplinary across the whole university, and just come only come from the civil engineering department. So. Uh, for example, other projects from the maquiladora, they require certain analysis for materials for certain filtration process that they require. So we collaborate with the materials department mm -hmm. and then they do their electronic microscope analysis or whatever, and we do the characterization. So, but those are, are only come from when there's funding, when this funding. Yeah. Just a short comment. Yes. It, um, so they do the technology, we do the basic science. Mm. And yes, that's, that's the way we complement. So we design what they may need to the filters or whatever. So that's one. So we have more collaborations in terms of agreement with government institutions that than yet than the private industry. With Thank you. Thank you. Hugo, or Dr. Gutierrez. Um, as I understand, you have ongoing collaborations uh, in various institutions in Chihuahua and maybe also elsewhere in Mexico. And so um, based on your personal experience, how do you uh, how do you go about developing those collaborations and, and how do you go what what makes for a good a good collaboration and your experience? I know you've worked with many institutions around the country and the world, maybe specifically about Chihuahua or elsewhere in Mexico. Sure. So um uh, what I found <clears throat> most, um, uh, perhaps more more useful, or what keeps the uh, collaborations going uh, better, and, you know, in, not in the short term but more on the long term, is when we are able to uh, to work um, uh, across borders with students. Uh, so bringing people here from from other places, uh, you know. Um, being formed here while doing the research, you know, over there is what um, uh, makes, I, I think, the collaborations much more stronger. Especially since, uh, uh, you know, once the, uh, the students get their degrees here and then they go back there, the link remains. And, and that's a, a really good mechanism for, for actually surviving the little drought spells from funding, right? <laughs> because we all know that funding only lasts for a certain amount of time and then projects end. And many times that kills collaborations. Uh, but if, you know, there are researchers that were formed here and then they go back to their countries or the, the places where they came from and they uh, more than likely keep collaborations going with mentors and, um, and associates. Uh, some really good examples are actually right now here in this panel. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, many of the panelists here have been uh, UTEP students at some yeah. point, <laughs> and uh, they do continue uh, those collaborations in that way. Um, I, I think that's that's one of the ways that um, that we have been able to to make that work. Yeah. I don't know if other panelists could comment on that. Um, yeah, I'll come back to that question with the other the other panelists, but I, um, I wanted to also come back to the, um, the watchfuls and, and maybe in particular, uh, Dr. Rocha Gutierrez, that um, we heard about all of the, the different uh, research areas in water, water, very, all many, many different places in the university. 
is there any kind of overarching or umbrella organization of that work? Is there is there a way that you can you find to communicate with your colleagues and other departments about uh, about water issues? Yes, uh, one of the the benefit that we have is that since we have different departments, we can know who is working with water. For example, uh, right now I'm doing collaboration with a doctor from the agricultural school and also with other colleges from the chemistry department, from engineering. Uh, but I, what I think is that we need to make like consortium like the one that you present in, in, and identify the people working with water and <clears throat> and put all those efforts together to look for, as my as my colleague just say, we need funding. We need funding because we have the good intentions. Maybe we have the students, but we need the money to reach the goals. And uh, another uh, good thing is that we have collaboration with uh, people from UTEP, like with Dr. Walker, with Dr. Wen Yili. But sometimes the problem is that the communication is, is a kind of a barrier because we have the idea, et cetera. But uh, the point is that we can, sometimes we cannot complete them because of the founding. And in the, the university, we have uh, a lot of people more than we think, right? Working with, with water now when we try to investigate, but we say, okay, we need to make a list and to put all the areas that we can uh, share and support each other. But, we could do that across all three universities, I think. Even. Yes. We could see, like, again, the, we probably have some joint strengths, but also that, that we complement each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know it's, it's particularly interesting that, that WASH has a, a school of agriculture and, and, and forestry. We have people here who study aspects of natural resources, like maybe a biology department or a geology department, but they have people who are especially connected to agriculture since the, how, how much of the water in Chihuahua State is used by agriculture versus cities? Any 85 percent. Yeah. 85%. And uh, I want to mention that I'm very excited because one of my collaborators in from the from one of the agricultural institutions from the government, uh, Dr. Uh, Maestro Jesus Ochoa, he's in the ESC program now. And we, uh, we, we're we going to continue with the collaboration. We have produced paper. We get we got some funding in, in that time. And he is one of the best links that I have with the agricultural uh, issues. And Great answer. Yeah, which happens to be my students. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that, that's a great example, actually, you know, uh, Three years ago, was it three years ago or four years ago, we, we wrote together a proposal that we submitted to, to the institution where he's coming from in Mexico, the, the National Institute for Forestry, Agriculture and Livestock Research. And it, it was funded and it was a, a proposal for water. This, this was um, to, to, to investigate you know, uh, the impact of agricultural activities in a, in a watershed that has an aquifer under you know, very high stress. The, 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 the aquifer is depleting really rapidly and uh, it's, it's the only source of water for for um, for most of the agriculture for, for most of the economic activities in that place if it sounds familiar you know it's, it's because you know this problem has been happening all over the world and uh, and it was thanks to you know um, Jesus and and you know his work there that we were able to uh, successfully fund that study. And, and that has, you know, brought uh, many important results that we are still working on them. And so having him here now as a student, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's been great because he's not only been working with me, he's been working with uh, many of the colleagues here in this panel. And so, and and that's, uh, I think that that's a very clear example of how, you know. Students can be the glue. The glue, exactly. And, and to bridge many other, many other uh, projects together. 
For example, uh, we are working right now on, on, uh, on finding out what are the, the quality issues of, of, of a big lake in, in, in Chihuahua um, in that agricultural basin. Um, and, uh, and that's work that we're conducting together with Dr. Rocha. And that's separate from the other project. Uh, Excellent. So. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Dr. Walker, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that I'm gonna ask you a question about uh, what it, takes to develop a, a large uh, consortium to study particular research projects, referring um, to your experience with uh, the new program. Um, and then so you can just leave a short answer on what do you think are the elements there? And then also, um, I know that Saul was mentioning that they do a lot of collaboration with the uh, water utility in, uh, in, in water as it may be good. Yeah, you quickly describe your collaborations with El Paso Water. Yes. Well, with respect to the longer term center level collaborations, I think my experience in the USDA funded work and then also the Newt Center where you have multiple institutions collaborating, those generally are birthed out of longer term friendships and collegial, collegial relationships. So I think the type of conversations that we're having today are really the beginnings and the, the basis of those types of long-term collaborations. You have a, a relationship of trust and a common understanding of the shared capabilities and also the complementary capabilities that you mentioned, so that when a proposal opportunity comes, you're not going to find somebody at that point, you've already got those existing relationships, then you reach out, hey, this could be an opportunity for these topics, these uh, research ideas that we've already been discussing that we can put together in a proposal uh, for these larger multi-institutional funding opportunities. So I just wanna commend you for organizing this type of uh, event and Luis, especially for his, I know he's put a lot of work into this um, and, and for our visitors who have traveled to be here across the border, uh, I just want to say thank you for investing in this time so that we can have these conversations because these will note um, most certainly result in those types of wonderful uh, research funding opportunities. And then also with respect to the collaboration with the water utility, we've recently established a strong multi-year uh, collaboration with El Paso Water on our side. And I know that um, some of our leadership team, the executive team has had uh, strong, sometimes informal, but strong collaborations with uh, the Junta Municipal. And so I think we're in a, because Wasajota has a great collaboration with the Junta mm -hmm. and, uh, and UTEP has a great collaboration with El Paso Water. I think we can have very strong regional, binational collaborations as well. We're also working on applied research projects with well water quality and yeah. things like that. So I think there are some wonderful opportunities for collaboration because, for example, manganese issues in wells that are, you know, very close to the border on both sides, we're probably going to end up finding similar solutions on both sides. So let's work together so that we come up with more efficient, more effective and more robust solutions in the long term. Thank you, Shane. Um, and then, uh, Dr. Chavez, um, would you like to make some comments on, on what you think are the important elements for making a successful collaboration, whether it's within your university, binationally? Yes, I think it is important to, to find the, the research uh, groups with the uh, abilities or with the expertise necessary to to, to reach the goals of the projects. And I think uh, UTEP, USJ, uh, and WASH have different uh, expertises and we can put all this together in order to get uh, the goals that we need to, to solve the problems with the water. Very good, thank you. And anybody from, uh, from WASH, if you, uh, I, I think in a brief discussion I had, with, uh, with one of you earlier, you indicated that you have relationships now with, with uh, JCOS, the state uh, water organization, and then also maybe 
with the city of Chihuahua. What's what's the name of the water utility in in Chihuahua? Sí. Junta Central. Same name. Which is state. Uh, and the other one is municipal, okay. Okay. So, but it's the same thing. Uh -huh. Any comments you might have on any kinds of collaborations you have with the state water agency, any of you guys down the end of the table, or, or the local water agencies? Well, we we have had collaborations last year uh, in monitoring uh, more than 1,000 uh, wells just to see the levels of uh, arsenic and fluoride because we are uh, a region with very high levels for the geology. And a lot of people, you know, is, is, maybe, is maybe exposure to those levels. So the Junta de Aguas wanted to have those data mm -hmm. together and see what are the actions that they can do to improve the water quality because we have uh, cow many counties where the technology is maybe uh, not available. So what can we do for that people that is in, in risk of drinking water with high levels of fluoride and arsenic? We started with them only with those two pollutants, but they are interested in keep monitoring more uh, other parameters. But um, I think that the that the effort that we had uh, together, the, the researchers, was very important for the government because they have a database. And also we, we use uh, maps to see the, the areas with the highest risk and the lowest risk. So now they, they're gonna work with this information in the technologies and in solving the that problem. Excellent, great. Okay, I think we've had a really uh, rich discussion here. Thanks to all of you for for contributing, and, and I think again, it's it's showing we have a lot of areas that we we could collaborate on, and and I appreciate the comments, even Dr. Gutierrez, that students are sometimes a good place to start and provide the glue so if you can just handle this entire <laughs> um okay so i think what we'll do now is we'll take questions from the audience both the in-person audience here and uh, the online audience uh so let's start with the in-person audience any questions for either of the panelists that you'd like to uh, follow up on Don't be shy. <laughs> there were a couple of questions on the yes. The Q and A right in the chat. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read uh, read these questions out, and the first one is. Recently, at least 12 oil wells have been drilled on University of Texas land on the Diablo Plateau, just east of El Paso, and into the underlying salt basin aquifer. Can this coalition provide independent analysis, insight, and guidance to prevent contamination of the aquifer? I'll let any of you who might want to address that. I think this is referring to, uh, uh, to probably north, East of here, going towards um, uh, going towards uh, Midland and Odessa, and that's a very specific question. I don't know if any, any of you can address that, but maybe I could make it a bit uh, a bit broader by um, saying. Well, that specifically to that question, we do have expertise in our uh, Deers department. Mark Engel uh, is a geochemist and with particular expertise in the produced waters and uh, oil and gas field. So we do have the capability at UTEP to help with that. And so to the, you know, to the east of here, the northeast of here, we have very active oil and gas and, and uh, uh, extraction, which gives rise to a lot of interesting problems that I think a lot of us can contribute to. And um, 
there, and, and one of the things I've been interested in finding out more about watch is that the, uh, that mining is, uh, is, not, uh, is, is an issue that's uh, very prevalent in around the capital city and maybe other parts of, of, uh, of Chihuahua. And have, have any of you been involved in looking at uh, working with either mining companies or, or looking at impacts of, of mining? Is that something that's on people's minds when they think of water quality in, in Chihuahua? Do you have experience with mining? We, in the, the chemistry school, the no, department, no. they watch. Watch, yes. So. The engineering school, the engineering department. Okay. They should, but I don't know specifically uh, okay. the, the people. Okay, thank you. But they, they have to. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the next question, uh, ¿Qué tienen que hacer las cabezas de las instituciones me mexicanas principalmente para que las investigaciones que vienen desarrollando no se interrumpan, interrumpan por cambio administra administrativo que se uh, de cada seis años? Um, and anybody uh, interested in, in answering that, uh, that question? Yes, yes. Um, I think um, when we do collaboration, we need to think that if the problem that we want to solve is in a short term or in the long term, and most of the problems we're facing now, environmentally talking, there will be a long term. So we cannot depend on politics about if we do or we don't do. Yes, we need the resources, but it depends also on us if we want to continue working in the same project until we got a result or we want to disperse in another like, things to do. We can, as the researchers, I think we what we do is we like to do some kind of research and then we find time to do other things uh, that we are interested in. So in collaboration, it also depends a lot on if we are available and we want to do it versus whatever challenge mm -hmm. we need to face. So it is important for us as a citizen and as a researcher to provide what the society needs to have a better water quality or a better quality life and construct or build for getting that. So yes, it can be changes on administration, but it will depend also in how much interest we have. And if we want to face that problem, to let them know the politicians that yes, this is your agenda, but this is important for the society and you are part of the society and we need to continue working on this. And it's not easy, no, but that's one of the challenges that we need to face. That's why. It's, it's, it's been very hard for um, our university uh, because, uh, first of all, we are a public university. Uh, our, uh, the goal of those universities, I, I don't know about UTEP or Texas system, but it's a public university where the students is almost free. College is almost free in Mexico for public, in public universities. So that's our main goal. As a public university, there are research centers, specific research centers, state of the art research centers across the country for specific <laughs> issues. So we we sometimes we compete with them. Simestav, Inta, other centers that high, very high level, international recognized, and we are a public university. So the our heads of the university, the the main concern is to to. Uh, to teach, to get as many students as possible with their problems, with their academic problems. So it's more, it's been very challenging in, in these last years because the funding, we, 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 we fund by federal grants and state from in very, 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 very little with uh, some uh, fees for, for the students from Red Cross or something like that. So uh, in order to have our salaries, the pay everything in the university, uh, they come from those funds. It, it's been a challenge uh, to, to to get other 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 uh, collaborations to get for research. That question is about research. So 
sometimes the, the 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 heads of the university they have okay we because we depend on the federal funds and the federal funds may have a specific agenda uh, and so your funds are this this much uh, and, and you have to do with this much fund if we would like to um, get funds for research we will have to start charging uh, students and, and that's not the goal of the Mexican government. I don't know here, you, you guys, the fees for, for the students here in the United States, I don't know, I don't know that, but it's not free, I guess. Over there is almost free. So that makes a make, that's why you have this nice room, you have this nice laboratory because you have a lot of funds and you have very, very well uh, financed and very well, um, accountability about uh, do, how those those monies are spent. So it's a big, very big, big difference. We are not private, and, and it, our, our our goal is different. So when the government change, the federal government change, they they can okay. We have these issues. I, I'm going to focus our monies on these 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 issues. And what 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 I can say. From my experience, I don't know why, but um, uh, from my experience is that we we don't haven't got much more, more money, but not less money. The funding uh, from the last years is that it's been the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. Where other times is okay, a little bit more, a little bit more. We can use some research, we can do equipment, maintenance of equipment, or calibration of equipment, or whatever. But this for past years has been the same, the same, the same, the same. No, no, not more. And 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 the government has his uh, his agenda, his own agenda. So, is 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 more. My feeling is that the federal government thinks, okay, we need to clean house across the country in many organizations and many. So try to do as best as you can. If you can efficientize your administration with the with the unions or whatever, whatever you have to do find the resources over there because there's not much money extra. We, we There's much money, but for example, I'm going to give you an example. They they, they hire, the, the focus of this past, this government is more on, 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 on the, the health system, the public health system to support. So they invest a lot, a lot of money on many hospitals that were abandoned, uh, no equipment, no people, no doctors. So a lot of the money, the fair amount, has been to to sustain, to get it better, the health system. That's why we don't have much more um, professors. Yeah, I understand so, that there's so, a big difference in resources that are in, yes. in, in, the, in the two countries. But I think we can work together. Yes, to that's, that's uh, yeah. That okay, I, I have, I have okay. I want to say a question. And in, si me permite, lo voy, a, ay, traducción, lo voy a hacer en español porque ya conozco la parte en inglés, la discutimos el otro día. Primero, eh, eh, reconocer toda la labor que hacen. Me parece sensacional que estén ustedes juntos, las tres universidades, hablando de, de colaboración. Eh, hace dos días participamos en otro panel donde uno de los directores de, del departamento de aquí de Ingeniería de Servicios sí. planteó ¿Por qué no tenemos un tipo de una carrera, un diploma, un certificado relacionado con agua? Okay. Este, a mí me pareció, fuera de, de que hubo ahí ciertos comentarios, a mí me pareció sumamente importante. Creo que esta región eh, es privilegiada porque tienen, bueno, tenemos a todos ustedes que hablan del tema de agua desde diferentes perspectivas. Tenemos a la SILA, tenemos a la IMOBIUC, ya hablaron de la Junta de Aguas, ya hablaron del Paso Water tenemos dos consulados, entonces hay una infraestructura para poder hacer un programa específicamente relacionado con agua, sobre todo porque es importante para todo mundo, ¿no? El agua es el, el futuro, le importa a los gobiernos, al federal, estatal, al local, a la academia, al, a la población en general. Entonces, fuera de la parte presupuestal, que obviamente entendemos que es, que es un problema, yo creo que en la medida que se pudiera formar, y lo estábamos discutiendo antes aquí, en la medida que se pueda formar un certificado, algo que busque formar a las personas que van a tocar el tema de agua hacia adelante, 
Entonces, de esa manera se pueden atraer fondos desde el gobierno de Estados Unidos, a lo mejor del gobierno de México, porque es una prioridad para todos. Lo que, lo que yo no he visto es que conjuntamente se haga una propuesta específica y más. Si es, si es de apoyo social, hay que apoyar a los jóvenes para que entiendan y traten el tema del agua. O teniendo un diplomado, un certificado, una, una carrera relacionada con eso, me parece importantísimo para poder buscar los fondos y echar mandar, ¿no? Ya, el mejor ejemplo es tenerlos a todos ustedes aquí, hablando de este tema desde diferentes perspectivas, de diferentes áreas de las tres universidades. Gracias. Uh, maybe we have somebody from Watts address that first. First, about uh, the science, or about the in water science among the whole participants here in <laughs> yeah the institutions. So um, we think that is just to put the things into the table and to write down all our ideas, the principal areas of interest, our expertise, and put it all together and mix it, and then make a real cluster of collaboration mm -hmm. to, to have um, to address all the issues in water science, because there are many, many things we have to, to work on. Uh, and I think that in collaboration with our authorities, because the long-term collaboration with our authorities is based on trust and on work and on productivity. And they can raise uh, many years. No, no, it's not just the, the time they are in, in, into the government. government. They, can, they can be longer just uh, to put all the things, write them, write them, and then um, to have a special projects for long-term este, projects, not only for six or, or three years, for long-term it's 20 years, and, and to have a solid structures of our proposals, as you know, we think. Thank you. And you yes. I was at the talk you mentioned, and I think it was very interesting, and I think we would like to do that also. But I think also that we can start if we want to know and to diagnose what will be the objective or what things are we going to address in this uh, program, new program, if it is established. It. But I remember someone said that he was from LOS. And there was mention to that maybe we can do some other things like in a summer, like maybe a workshops where we can invite students from different areas, even social uh, legislation or engineers or everything to do this kind of diagnose in a regional base about what are the main issues or concerns about what's the state of the art of laws in water? What is the state of the art on data that is collected or not, or how many water bodies or underground water is being doing and that we can have some product from that workshop in all different areas and i think that will also produce a better comprehension about what is our reality in terms of water in this place and also define what will be the requirements for this professional in water that we would like to form thank you So I, I, I would like to follow on the consul's uh, idea because I, I think he, uh, from my own perspective, I think he hit the nail you know, on the head. And uh, yes, there's a problem when government changes uh, because you know priorities change. But if we can somehow institutionalize, you know, um, different kind of programs, whether those may be like um, you know these diplomados or or master degree programs like the ones that uh, WATCH is, is trying to push forward, or you know, uh, joint um, exchange programs that, that are institutionalized in which you know, every institution commits itself to dedicate some time and resources and people, then things would work. Um, I'll give you an example. I'm the first generation of a program that was uh, of scholarships Uh, from the Chihuahuan government to UTEP uh, that was established like uh, 22 years ago. And uh, I came, um, you know, um, funded by this scholarship from, from, from the government of Chihuahua. They provided the, the money for the tuition and then UTEP committed 
to you know provide me uh, uh, work so that I can live here you know with a, with an assistantship. And I did my master's here at UTEP in that way. And that program you know has not stopped. I mean, th there have been some attempts to cut it, but I think you know Arturo Barrio, who's here, you know, has been very, very good at at um, you know um, uh, negotiating with the government in Chihuahua to to keep it alive. And you know, a lot of us, you know, uh, not not just me, you know, have come to the university and got degrees, and you know, have done research, and uh, that has impacted our communities. And I think that's that's the way to go. The other thing. That, that I want to say is, you know, if we can amass, uh, if we can get together a critical mass of researchers and, and people who are committed to these ideas, then it, it's, it's possible to make these, these things a reality, to, to push forward these, these kind of initiatives and, and to institutionalize these programs. Because then it doesn't matter if the government, you know, um, changes, you know, there's already an agreement. Uh, that it's uh, under which you know all parties are binded to 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 keep uh, uh, to to continue it right to keep um, uh, funding it or you know uh, sure. giving it support. So um, I think that's the way to go. It's um, and like I said, you know, and especially if that if those agreements can fund students, you know, we can always find you know uh, funding from different kind of sources, but uh, but we need to. Uh, to have this going. I just want to follow up on what Hugo mentioned and, and you know, I'm going to share a little bit. Next week, our presidents are going to be meeting. So it's important that you highlight to the rector, who was supposed to watch, you know, what you've been hearing today about the importance of this topic. We had a visit of all the deans from watch, and one of the common topics that was uh, addressed was water. So it's something that is already on the radar of the importance. So just, you know, if, uh, we have that meeting next week between the presidents of our universities, and it will be important if, if you know, Dr. Camargo, and, and I know Dr. Rivera already has it on the radar, but just to, 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 to try to analyze this topic as a common ground for collaboration between our universities. Thank you. Adding on to this conversation, this year, we're celebrating 200 years of U.S.-Mexico relations. And so everything we're doing right now is through the perspective of the bicentennial. And so when we're talking about short-term political changes versus long-term objectives, I think to the extent that we can characterize these as where do we want to be 200 years from now? What is this region going to look like? What is our water supply going to look like? I think that um, it's a good way to maybe get larger buy-in for longer-term <clears throat> I like the idea of looking 200 years ahead. We need to be preparing our students. We need to be preparing our students to be clear. Just a quick note. I, 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 I know that there's there's already an agreement and paper between the, our universities, yes. uh, better general. So when we have these uh, collaborations, it should be it's, it's going to be in writing in very detail. So yeah. people should uh, not be worried about not not uh, fulfilling the agreement. Uh, and yeah. we already got those in yeah. instruments. We yeah. already we were with when we were with you. It's, sure. There's been very sure. long <laughs> agreement, yeah. and yeah. so it, that should not be a, a problem. And Dr. Chavez, yeah, I'm just gonna add some information because uh, we already mentioned that water is important for population, for governments, for universities. But don't forget industry. Industry, industry uses a lot of water, and maybe we can involve industry in this in this uh, proposal. Okay, um, thank you very, very much uh, for, to the audience, both online and in the okay. okay. That's a sorry, question. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, if, if somebody would like to answer that in about uh, one and a half minutes. I think <laughs> the question? Sorry. How to engage the society in our studies? You need to um, spread or teach them or it's environmental education first. So you, they need to feel that water is something so important because it's essential for them. 
right? Or whatever we are going to study in science, but they need to feel that it's part of them, that it's important for them to know. And the only way to do that is about communicating science, not in the way we communicate to each other, but in a way they can understand and give them the power, empower the people to participate. Not because, oh, you don't know. No, if you don't know, I'll teach you so you will do it by yourself because it's your land, is your water, is your environment, and is your health. But if they do not know it, they do not understand how important is the environment, a good health, and a good environment health for their own life, that will be very difficult. And you would want to take even a greater risk is ask them what they think the important research is rather yeah. than us saying, here's the research, uh -huh. better be yeah. interesting. And that. you need to, to ask them because we as in academia, we usually want to do what we like <laughs> and it's not the way it works. If we want the population, the society to be involved, we need to ask them, what do you need? And then do or do the research or learn what, for what they need. And then we can do this agreements on long-term or short-term, but we need to have a plan and they need to see the results. Because if we just tell them we are going to do this and there's no result and we don't do it because there was no money. So if you do a commitment with them without money or with money, you do it because that's the way they will mm -hmm. trust on you. Mm -hmm. And that's the way they will continue working on that. Yep. All right, that was an excellent Last question there. Um, so thank you again to the online and in-person audience. And then thank you very much to our seven panelists here. I think this was very productive and thank you for making the time and, and uh, giving us all of your views here. And I think we have a lot of uh, things that we can do to, to go from this, this panel here. So let's have a hand for the panelists, please. <laughs>